Statistics surrounds us and is used in every aspect of our life. Like it or not, we are all a statistic and part of some data somewhere. From height and weight to our family income to everything we do online. The question is, are all statistics correct? The simple answer is not always. I always say, you tell me what you want the data to say and I will come up with statistics to support you. It is important to understand how experiments are done and how data can be manipulated. The statistics videos are tutorials for a basic statistics course. There are 20 videos for a total of over 3 hours that cover topics of organizing data, producing data and experiments, probability, and inference to include Z, T, and proportion intervals, and inference tests. The 20 video tutorials can be used by students as a review of a particular topic or as an awesome student aid that can work in conjunction with your book. My goals with the tutorials was to simplify some of the topics using real life examples. Here are some short clips of just a few of the tutorials. Four probability rules which we've already started touching on but that we need to cover. For any event A, you look at this, probability of A must be less than or equal to 1 but greater than or equal to 0. In English, what is that saying? That when you look at the probability of an event happening, for example, Brown, this probability must fall between 0 and 1. This probability must fall between 0 and 1. If I ever get a probability where it's 1.35, that is not possible because your probability is between 0 and 1, and 1.35 would be over 1. So that's not probability, a true probability. Your probabilities must last between 0 and, or must fall, sorry, between 0 and 1. All possibilities, all your sample space and the probabilities must add up to be a total of 1. So I add all these up, which we talked about in the last sec, uh, slide. If I add all these up, that must give me 1.0 or 100%. The complement rule states that the probability of an event not occurring is 1 minus the probability that it does occur. This looks ugly when you look at it, it looks confusing. Probability of not A is equal to the probability of A complement minus or is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. What does this mean? Let's do an example. What's the probability of not getting red? So I would write red and then I would put a little C or a little apostrophe kind of thing there. It's called red complement which is simply 1 minus the probability of getting red, which is 1 minus the point 1, 3, which is therefore 0.87. The probability of not getting red is simply the probability of everything else happening. So isn't it easier instead of you can either add up 0 0.13, 0 0.16, 0 0.20, 0 0.24, 0 0.14, and add those up. Or it's easier just to do 1 minus the probability of red actually happening. Women's heights follow a normal distribution with a mean of 64.5, that's a population mean, and a population standard deviation of 2.5. That's normally how we would write it out. Normal distribution with mu being your mean and your sigma being your standard deviation. So this tells me that right down the middle for women's heights, it is 64.5 is the average female's height. If I go out one standard deviation either side of this mean, and a standard deviation is 2.5, so I add 2.5 and I subtract 2.5, that's where 68% of females and their heights will fall. So if I add 64.5 plus the 2.5, that puts me to 67 inches. If I subtract 2.5, 64.5 minus 2.5, that's what puts me down to 62 inches. So 68% of women fall between 62 and 67 inches tall. Let's walk through an example, then it's easier to see where the numbers fill in. I took a sample of 36 pop cans and found the average fill to be 359 milliliters. I know the population standard deviation is 3 milliliters. 
Find the 95% confidence interval for how full the cans of pop are usually filled. X bar plus or minus Z star times standard deviation of the square root of n. Let's fill this in and figure out what our numbers are. Let's start with X bar. We found our X bar to be 359 milliliters. That's what we found in our sample. Plus or minus Z star, since it's 95%, Go back here, 95% is 1.96. So I put in 1.96 in for Z star times the standard deviation, which was 3 over the square root of N, which was 36 pop cans. So 36 goes here. Do this in parts on your calculator. This part right here in parentheses is 0.5. Multiply that by the 1.96, and I get 0.98. So right now I'm sitting at 359 plus or minus a margin of error of 0.98. How does that break down? Well, I break it down this way. 359 plus the 0.98 and the 359 minus the 0.98, which in turn gives me, on the high end, 359.98, and on the low end, 358.02, and then I throw that in parentheses. This is your 358.02, and this is your 359.98. Those numbers just kind of fill in here. And then you can see our final conclusion would be I am 95% confident. There's one part. I need to tell the reader the confidence level. The true mean for the pop cans in milliliters, you need to talk about it in the context of the problem. In the context of the problem, we're working with pop cans here is between 358.02 and 359.98 milliliters. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me using the contact link on the website. I wish you luck as you go through your statistics course. And remember, you can't avoid statistics. It surrounds you, so you might as well engage and understand it.